Welcome to the Biz Bros Podcast. My name is Kyle Nelson. I got my co-host here, Mr. Eli Libby. Good morning. What's up, man? I'm doing great. Central Oregon, 106 degrees this weekend. 106? Yeah. That was 100. Oh, no, it matter. jumped 106. Wow. That's hot for us. We're a mountain town. I always update kind of with the weather. I do, yeah. You're going to love, man. Yeah. Um... Well, today we got a really special guest. We're really mm-hmm. excited. We actually had his business partner, Brian Johnson's on. Yeah, Johnson a on ago. a couple weeks ago, a couple yeah. months ago. I don't remember what it was. Yeah. Um, and we're excited to have um, Mr. Jack Tompkins mm-hmm. on the call today mm-hmm. or on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, he's the owner of Pineapple Consulting Firm based out of uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. He helps you analyze and visualize your financial and marketing data in interactive charts, graphs, and dashboards so you don't have to deal with the annoying data gathering or manipulating it. Mm-hmm. tell you that's... Big. Right, His nice. goal is to help you grow profitability and efficiently by helping you not just know your numbers through and through, but also visualize them to quickly get mm-hmm. the full picture. And we got a really cool topic, yes. uh, how small businesses can benefit from the data. And it's not just for Fortune 500 companies. So, uh, Mr. Jack Tompkins, welcome to the Biz Bros Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. And I like that you called data mm-hmm. a cool topic. It definitely doesn't get that rep, so yeah, I'm already excited. Yeah, know, right? Usually it's a snore fest, but uh, <laughs> right. we love data. We get all data out, especially um, we have a, another partner, a business partner, um, Clint, and he's like our data king. Mm-hmm. He just gets all data out. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> we love that. We love you that. need one. You need one of those. Yeah, definitely not me. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. well, cool. Yeah, Jack, tell us a little bit about kind of uh, your kind of the beginnings of being an entrepreneur, Mm -hmm. a business owner, how you got into this consulting um, and the kind of the data field um, that you guys are in today. Absolutely. Um, So my story is honestly, it's nothing special. It's probably similar to a lot of entrepreneurs out there. Um, Was kind of raised professionally, if you will, in the corporate world. And I was an analyst in a bunch of different capacities and had a bunch of other roles and stuff. But analyst was kind of my cornerstone. Uh, Grew up in kind of the insurance world, which uh, is super not exciting, but very data driven. So I knew that I was good with that. I knew I liked Microsoft Excel. That's my best friend. My girlfriend always gives me crap for it. But um, (laughs) I knew that I liked all that stuff, but I also wanted to run my own business. And the corporate world, great people, great structure, all that good stuff, steady pay, which got to love, but it wasn't quite for me in the long run. So kind of just took those two ideas, the analytics and the data and all that fun stuff. I use fun loosely, but. (laughs) Um, took that with my entrepreneurial drive and formed pineapple and I've been full-time in it for coming up on a year and a half now. Nice. Wow. So what is it about data and Excel? What is it that really excites you and kind of lights your fire? What, like, where does that passion come from? (laughs) It's a very good question. Um, so I've always been a numbers geek and I'm I'm the first to admit it. And I've always loved that side of things. Mm -hmm. When I was growing up, I like loved math. Like that was my favorite class, but nobody else did. And I was very confused by that. So now I get to take all those numbers and put them into these visual dashboards that everybody can understand and it becomes something that everybody can use. Um, and I mean, in the business world, drive the strategy with. Yeah. So I really enjoyed being able to dive into the numbers and honestly make a pretty picture out of the numbers so that mm-hmm. everybody is got a level playing field and can use the numbers. I love that. I think it. We we talk about it all the time, and I know you know. But the numbers don't lie, and if True. if people don't know how to like digest and visualize like what is actually happening, right? Like Excel sheets, filtering them, that is hard to visualize. But being able to package that up and present that to somebody that can make the decisions is super super powerful. I think what you're doing is incredible. Yeah, like that would help me. Putting things Absolutely. into like an interactive visual chart and graph because mm-hmm. I'm, yeah, I'm a visual I'm guy. so visual, <laughs> and uh, looking at rows and columns that's not visual for me. Yep, <laughs> right. And, and you're in the majority too. Um, I think the number is like 65 percent of people are visual learners, and that's their number wow. one. Honestly, I think that's a low number because if you put a giant red X in front of anybody, they're going to get the picture. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Um, very, very true. So, so tell us a little bit. Well, first, a quick question: Why mm-hmm. pineapple? Uh, farm. What's, what's up with the pineapple? I gotta know. I always get this question. Um, so it kind of started out honestly, I really loved pineapples, and I'm from Connecticut, which is not exciting, but I moved down to Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah. And so the whole southern hospitality thing, um, mm. it's kind of like if you if a neighbor moves in next door, you give them a pineapple, welcome to the neighborhood. Um, so I really like that, but cool. 
Never heard really that. Sold me. Yeah, it's kind of and like Pinoff was like it sounded like well from like the ancient times or like oh, well, that makes sense. Yeah. Something like that. Hmm. Um, so there's like I've, everybody that I meet has some random pineapple story. So I've like I have wow. so many random facts on pineapples now. Um, well, I give, love it. Give, give it. Give us yeah, one, one quick one, fact. I mean, yeah, give us one quick fact for the for the topic. <laughs> so <laughs> back in I think it was like the 1400s. Um, pineapples were a huge sign of wealth. So you'd have like picture like the king's table that's like you know 40 feet long with 300 chairs kind of thing right. mm -hmm. and you were at a really cool dinner if they had a pineapple and like that was a symbol because it took two years wow. to grow and they couldn't get him in like europe or anything so they had to like bring him back on the boat so it was like oh man this guy's got the pineapple like yeah all right, he's doing well <laughs> yeah he's got five pineapples so he must right. have a damn good dinner <laughs> this is amazing right <laughs> then they had sliced pineapple on the pig, and uh, that means you really got the money. Wow, absolutely. I see the pineapples in the back there. It's funny, we have that same golden pineapple yeah, as a prop. I just thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> nice. See, they, they, they're everywhere. They come up a lot, and like they're not in your face, but they're always a fun reminder. There's a vacation feeling for me. That was another reason for my business, yep. too. That's cool. I love that. So let's dig in. Yeah. How 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 are small businesses benefiting from from data? Like, you do think like mm -hmm. data driven companies, Fortune five hundred, like that's huge. Like mm -hmm. that's what they do. They got a data analysis people. They got their yep. CFO. They got their whatevers. Um, but small businesses, you got one, two, three, maybe even ten people or twenty yep. people. It, you know, you might have one person that's good at their data. Mm -hmm. But uh, how can they? How can we? How can we both the best um, benefit from it? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's to your point, it's kind of data for the fortune 500. I'm a small business. I'll figure it out later. You know, once I get to the fortune 500, I'll right. that. Um, it's not that it has that stigma. Um, Cause obviously corporations are very, very data driven, small businesses, data comes in a very different format. Mm -hmm. So whereas corporations have data warehouses and all this fancy technology and all the software and teams of people working on just making the data level and analyzing it, Small business has QuickBooks or mm -hmm. Google Analytics. Yep. Right? It's stuff that you use all the time. You use CRM, yeah. um, customer relationship management. All that stuff is data. And that is like the cornerstone of small business data. Mm -hmm. So it's it's nothing crazy. You don't have massive data warehouses or anything like that, but everything's in front of you. When mm -hmm. you send out an invoice from QuickBooks and somebody pays it, if you have one sale through QuickBooks, you've got data. Yep. Right. You talked to somebody to get that sale. You marketed somehow. Um, you did a thing for them, product or service, mm -hmm. whatever it is. There's a bunch of pieces of data within each sale. So, yeah, um, yeah it's, it's as simple as that, really. Yeah, it's a great point. I think specifically for small businesses, resources are limited just right. off the get go. You got to be super lean. So, I, I mean, data drives decisions. And if you know what you're doing with your data, you can make educated decisions that really push the needle. And I think even for small businesses, I think it's more important than for the five, Fortune 500 companies just because of that how, leanness that you have to be. How, how quick you can break. Mm -hmm. So and, what what are some small data points that small businesses are like, yeah. just, they're just not missing out on or could be aha moments for them that you've seen? Mm. Right, it's a great question. Um, I focus primarily in three areas, financial marketing and what I call operational data. Um, mm -hmm. And the answer I'm going to give are like, they're not this groundbreaking thing that nobody's ever thought of on right. the revenue, or on the, sorry, on the financial side, revenue and profit stick with that. Mm -hmm. If your revenue is up month over month, great. You did better than last month. And that is because of something. Maybe mm -hmm. you had an extra sale, which means the networking meetings that you went to were more effective or, you know, something along those lines. That's true. Um, marketing you can do leads and conversions um i i like to stick with conversions and conversion rate um yep. because those pay the bills not leads right um and then i work with a lot of service-based businesses so the operational side is kind of like tracking their hours so what's your hourly rate and is it anywhere close to what you want it to be right mm. I, I guess it's kind of i think a lot of people get a little overwhelmed and they think right. data and it, it's like just simplify it a bit like you're saying revenue and profit well, where are you at you need larger profit margins. Perfect. Well, let's figure this out. Mm -hmm. uh, you need higher revenue from last month. Well, what did you do? Yep. Right. Exactly. Things like that. Okay. You've got all this traffic coming in and only 5% is converting. Let's get you up to 7%. Yep. Let's right. look three months ago when you had a 7% conversion rate. What did you do different? Mm -hmm. Was there a pop up on your website? Was it quicker return? Mm -hmm. Whatever. I mean, there's so much that you can do that yep. that'll help just 
fine tune, just small fine tuning mm-hmm. eventually turns into a big tune up. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, yeah that's exactly right. Um, right. We can talk about this more later or another time too, but visualizing all that in somewhat of a dashboard with the charts and the graphs yeah. and the indicators and stuff is huge. Um, I know you guys like analogies. Um, so I was thinking of one, I, the Brian Johnson episode really cued me onto the, the yeah. analogy. Um, love him. <laughs> but um, think of like a car dashboard. Mm. So yep. the goal is you're driving and you quickly look down, you check your speed, check your fuel, check your miles per gallon, whatever it is. Mm. Yeah. And you immediately see within like, you know, three seconds, you know, how you're doing. Um, and mm-hmm. if everything's literally on fire or if there's any red <laughs> flags. Yep. So data for bi- business is very much the same. So mm-hmm. your speedometer, you're comparing against the speed limit. Um, the speedometer in business is think of it as like your revenue. You're comparing yep. not against the speed limit, but against maybe last month. So how mm-hmm. are you doing in comparison to that? Average miles per gallon. Are you driving efficiently? Think of that as like leads converting. Are you marketing efficiently? Yeah. Um, so all that stuff, small business data, throw it into some visuals. Um, I think it helps. Yeah. Through your career in the consulting firm, how common is it for businesses to come to you and they think that they're maybe on cruise control and <laughs> and and, <laughs> uh, and they're they're doing good, but as soon as you pull that curtain back, I know I loved it. Uh, as soon as you pull that pull the curtain back they realize that they're actually a sinking ship and they're, they're, they're really not doing good financially. So right. mm-hmm. it kind of looks like they're doing good. Maybe the, 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 the sales are coming in. How common is it that when you get in there and you present something to them, they're like, Oh my gosh, like we are really sinking. Well, the I think out of control vehicle would be better than sinking. Yeah. Ship. <laughs> <laughs> Just car on fire, but yeah. Nice. Yeah. Driving off the road or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so it doesn't happen that much, which is great. There are definitely times when maybe they're not driving off the road, but they're driving on the shoulder and then it needs a slight correction to get back on track. Um, And it comes down to kind of like what we already talked to and at least alluded to what's working, what's not working, right? Mm -hmm. If if marketing's the problem uh, or something that they're looking at and they're spending two, three grand on ads every month, but getting Mm -hmm. one customer that gives them one grand a month, that's a red flag, right? Um, Yep. So adjusting from that, maybe spend less and put your marketing into something else, um, whatever exactly. it is. Yep. Um, We've had a our- great example. <laughs> yeah. I, I think what's interesting too is like um, it data can also help you see like the oh shit moments. Yeah. Yes. Like if we are, our traffic and mm-hmm. leads dried up a few months ago. It was yeah. the weirdest thing. We went from the highest, biggest month, most leads ever, mm-hmm. highest conversions, tons of traffic. And then the next month it dried up and yeah. we were like, like dried up in terms of like zero, like yep. nothing. Car smoking. It was cars so on weird. Fire. Oh, it was yeah. on fire. Yeah. We, 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 we tried engulfed. to figure it out, but we dug into the data literally. Yeah. And after about two <laughs> weeks, we finally figured out the different key points of what was happening. Mm-hmm. All Just like that. that. Once we fixed it, gave it another couple weeks and it got back to normal and revved back up. It was but the all only, data though, all like, data, literally, hundred percent. It was weird. It's it so really out. weird. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> and I think a big part too of coming back to the topic too about why it's so important from a small business standpoint is, I think the unique thing about startups and small businesses really is they can turn really quick. Right. They can make a pivot really quick. Turn the car really quick. Yeah, get into the passing lane real quick. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. They can change, but they they change based on knowing these different data points. I think what you're doing, conceptualizing it for these business owners, is very important. So, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. It's it's kind of lucked out that it's something that I love to do, and also is hugely important. Um, I think it's becoming more of it's not just a nice to have anymore. It's you really have to yeah. be looking at the numbers. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. says it. You got to know your numbers. Totally. Right. Um, what what tools? Um, we, could you recommend our audience use to kind of start dabbling in understanding data and maybe be able to like conceptualize and visualize that data a little bit better? Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of good stuff. Okay. Honestly, I love Microsoft Excel. Um, that's a good place that'll take any sort of data and you can make something out of it. I realize not a lot of people like Excel, let alone how much I like Excel. So um, <laughs> things out there, everybody's got a website. So Google Analytics is pretty good. Um, yeah. They have some decent visuals and for the mm-hmm. listeners that might not know what it is. Um, and basically you link it up to your website and it tracks all the different traffic for you. Yep. And if you have, uh, you can have things like goals on there. If they click a certain thing, you call it a conversion and all that fun stuff. But mm-hmm. at the base of it, you can easily measure your, your website traffic. Um, 
So for example, if you release a podcast and your website gets a whole lot of hits, that's great. That was a great podcast for you. Mm -hmm. um, so Google Analytics, one great one. Um, QuickBooks, they have some default kind of visualizations. Honestly, they're not great, but you can dip your toe. Yeah. Um, they'll show you, they focus a lot on like invoicing and who's paid and who hasn't, mm -hmm. which obviously is important, but there's a whole lot more underneath the surface. Still, if you're looking to just dip your toe into it, check out QuickBooks and I'm sure that you will look at it and say, oh, this is kind of helpful. I would really yeah. love to see this also though. And then you kind of download into Excel and kind of try and make that visual for yourself. Wow. That's great. Well, yeah. Thanks for digging into data with Absolutely. us. Um, yeah. If there's one thing that you kind of wanted our listeners to walk away with, what's your number one message you try to get a, get across? Number one message. Okay. Um, so every small business owner, they started it with a gut instinct. This is going to work and I love this and it's going to be awesome. Gut instinct is still going to drive your business. Honestly, I'm as data driven as anybody in small business and my gut is still a huge driving force. Mm. Um, so your gut's not going anywhere. Yeah. What I would love to see a lot of small businesses do is just give data a seat at the table. Okay. Um, doesn't have to control your business or your life or anything like that. Just listen to it. And right. I like to say you can be completely right with your gut instinct. You can be completely profitable with the help of data though. Awesome. Wow. So I love that. Just giving it a seat. Absolutely. So Give it a true. seat. Ah, perfect. Yeah. Well, well, Jack, if, oh, go well, ahead. Jack, no, no, you go. If people want to follow you, learn a little bit more about uh, pineapple consulting, maybe get some fun pineapple facts, where can they reach out to you at? <laughs> I need to put more pineapple facts on my website, but I would still say head to my website, um, pineapplecf.com, which is pineapple meaning consulting firm.com. Um, I've got a whole bunch of examples, ways to contact oh. me and services and all the fun stuff. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thanks, Jack, for jumping on the Biz Bros podcast. Um, I think, you know, us going to a, mm -hmm. a shorter podcast, this really gave a big punch. Absolutely. Like, honestly, I, I think it's just given, given data the light that it needs and give see it attention, table. give it a seat, and it's huge. So okay. thanks for hitting up on the podcast, yep. and we'll see you soon, Jack. Thanks so much for having me, guys. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the Biz Bros Podcast. Just type in Biz Bros Podcast on Google. Maybe go on Apple. Maybe go on Spotify. Subscribe to that. Wherever. Follow us on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. And we'll see you guys in the next Biz Bros Podcast episode. See you guys.